So as you can see, we are going to be making this turret blender physics animation. We even see it in cycles looking a little crazy, obviously, but once we do render this, it'll look much nicer. So let's hop over to Blender and let's get started. So here we are in Blender version 3.3 and I have the model already created for you guys so you can go ahead and follow along and just animate and implement all the physics that way it can save plenty of time. However, if you want to know how exactly I animated and modeled this little turd guy right here, definitely go ahead and click the link in the description below to see that video where I do a step by step or simply just go to my channel. But if you want to save some time, I'll include the full file download link that way you can get access to everything that you can see right here. And essentially, all you really need to look for is basically this guy right here, the turret controller, which I just named it. And this is pretty much this guy's little head looking thing. And all you have to do is just press R and Z. And let me actually get out of cycles here really quick. So R and then Z, and pretty much you can rotate it however you want to, or if you want to even rotate it, um, let's get this even upwards, you could technically. Maybe the mesh isn't perfect for up, but you can go slightly up without any problems. And then basically, all you need to focus for this video is literally everything inside the hair control. Everything else, lighting stuff, you can adjust yourself. But basically, the left laser has this ammo that I just call it ammo L. And then below that, when we have the right laser, uh, which is the guy right here, and that's pretty much ammo R. So the easiest way, if you wanted to, was just like double click. G, Z, Z, and you can see the ammo just comes out like that. And then if you want to select both, you just select it here, one. And then if you hold command or control and just select it again, now I can do G, Z, Z, and now I move this. So that's literally the main things you need to focus on, and then the rest will be involving the uh, physics. And I already have this little cube guy wall created for you. If you want to adjust it, the best way is just go to like the seven on top view, and then just move it according to wherever your camera view is. But one last thing is the camera. I have it set here with the end start at 400 meters. That way we can see everything in the back is covered. And if you want to adjust this, that would be pretty much, you want to do like 100, then you can see how it doesn't cut everything. But for the most part, that's pretty much all the settings I have for this. And now let's go ahead and let me show you how we can create this amazing little turret breaking animation. So first things first, we need to make the cube crumble into X amount of pieces. And I say X meaning you can have it crumble into two, five, hundred, thousand, just depending on your computer. And the easiest way is first off, we have this little guy right here, the physics property. So click on the cube and then simply go right here. Now there's multiple options, but the one for this one that we're gonna actually be using is gonna be rigid body. Now there is an actual add-on we need to have first. So go here to edit, go to preferences, go here to add-ons, search and type in cell, and then click on cell fracture. And then once you have that, you are good to go. And then what we can actually do is click, make sure we have the uh, cube selected, go to objects. And now if you notice, we go here down and let's see, we have quick effects and we can see we have cell fracture now this time. So let's go ahead and click on cell fracture. And now there's multiple ways to go about this. Let me show you two different ways. That way you can decide which way you want to do it. So the first way is if you just simply let this do itself and calculate its own fractures and pretty much source limit is ideally how many you want. A hundred is looks enough. It looks like something's actually cracking like a rock breaking into pieces. But for example purpose, let's just say uh, let's just say 30. And I also don't want my computer to explode while recording this, but pretty much that's really all you need to worry about. And then the next thing is the collection, and that's where you want to put these little pieces. So let's just call these uh, pieces. Everything else is additional settings that you can go deep dive into other tutorials. But for this sake, it's literally, we just need to do this. And then when we click okay, Essentially what's gonna happen is you can see it turns it into, right now at least, only seven pieces. Now that's kind of boring, that's kind of lame. If you just wanna have it like this, feel free. But let's do this, Control Z or Command Z, basically undo this. And now let's go back to Object. Let's go back to Quick Effects, Self Fracture. 
And we have this option called the annotation pencil, which we can select right here. But the thing is, it's not going to work because we don't have anything written on this actual cube. So the way to do this is if we go here to this option, this annotation pencil, let's click on it. And don't worry if the screen disappears, we can go back to it. And ideally, whatever you decide to draw, it will focus its uh, essentially the center point in that area. So for just simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna make like a curvy like S looking spot. And then we can go back to our object, quick effects, self fracture. Except this time, we'll go to annotation pencil, have the source limit set here, let's go collection pieces, and then pretty much you could make the recursive depending on what you want to, but random or small, just keep it at this. And look at this, now, we have essentially, if we scroll down here, since we set it to the limit to 30, it's basically 30 because 29 plus the first one. So now you can see when we actually do the annotation pencil, it adds this cool little broken type effect. And you can see how everything is essentially centered in this area. So if you were trying to change the angle, you could probably draw it over here. That way it's like a little different. But for the most part, that's how we create the little like brittle effects. And then if you want to get rid of this, like this, because uh, if you go back to the object, this this little blue line is still here. So we can click back on here, go down to note, and just simply click on this little eyeball. Get out of there. There we go. And then if we were to hit the space bar, so now we have the keyframes here. Check this out. Nothing is happening. And check this out. We have to go back now. And we actually have the cube, which is the original guy right here. This is the main cube. I call this one like the, let's name it the main cube. So he's pretty much the outer shell. And then we have all these little pieces inside. So now go over to your new collections, the pieces collection. Technically, we could probably move this outside of its uh, this collection if you wanted to. So let's just go like this and let's just drag it out here. That way it's by itself. And technically we have the main cube here too, but we'll keep the main cube hidden for now for just a second. Let's go here to the pieces selection. And if you don't want to drag it out of the collection, it's fine. You can keep it there. It doesn't matter. But all you need to do is literally select, just select any of them. It doesn't matter which one, but I like to select the top one here just because it's easier to select them all because I have all these like lights in the way. And all you need to do is click on rigid body. So now we have rigid body active and it's 1kg which again, depending on if you're trying to make specific weights to a uh, certain you know, scale, it doesn't really matter for this tutorial, but now if I hit play, look at this. The guy literally drops, and let me hide this real quick. And you can see it just drops, just like that. So what we wanna do, let's go back to our cube guy. Let's select him here. Let's do shift left arrow just to reset it. And the way we prevent this from dropping is if we go down here to let's go back down and go to dynamics and then go to deactivation click that down arrow again and then click on start deactivation so it should be the bottom one with this current version and check that out look at this it is not falling down so now you're probably like all right so how do we get that on every do we have to go in here every single second no we don't why should we need to select the main a uh, piece that we just add all these details and then we just simply scroll away to the end of how many pieces you created hold shift and then click it so now we have everything selected and then we can go to object go to rigid body and then pretty much say copy from active so now if we go like this you can see look what happens these are falling but you're probably like, did that even change thing? Well, the way to check, this is the main one we have the actual physics property open. So if I click on number one, look at that, still has it. Number two, number three, etc. Now notice something, these are all the exact same weights, which ideally it doesn't make sense for like a bigger piece to be the same. So the way to change this, we can go here, go all the way down, shift select this, all of them again, go back to the object and then rigid body and then we can go and click on calculate mass. So what happens is now it gives us all these options of different things we can essentially have it become. So if you wanna make it like a brick style, feel free beans, cocoa. I mean, for this tour it doesn't make sense, but limestone is pr pretty, I'd say solid for this. 
the other options but for now let's just go you can either go granite limestone whatever you can test it out i'll just go with limestone broken and then i'll hit space and then now if we go back to our little pieces notice the cubes just significantly change the kilogram size now this is insanely heavy <laughs> so right there we got this that now you can go ahead and go into super detail with those physics and you know in terms of accuracy but for the most part that is ideally what we got going on and everything right now is not dropping and nothing is falling so the way we can do first off make sure you guys save this so I'm gonna go ahead and simply save this really quick so now what we want to do is we want to actually test to make sure that these pieces will break so what we can do is if we press either one or three I think three is probably easier we can do like shift right click above the, uh, the cube and let's make sure we're technically not even right there. We should just literally just shift right click on top of the cube. That would make it easier. Shift A, add mesh cube, and let's do GZ to bring it up. So once you have the cube created, click on it and then go over to the physics property and add rigid body. And now if we go ahead and just view this, we see it's gonna hit it, but it's gonna knock everything down. And the reason is because there's nothing holding it. So let's do shift left arrow, reset it. Alt H or option H to reopen the plane back. If you don't know where it's at, simply just go here and oh, I'll click on the eye if it's not there. And then we're selecting the plane currently. So let me show you right here. Go to rigid body this time, switch it to passive. So now if I play this, look at that, it actually explodes. But the problem is if we go to the turret option, the main cube, let's just hide them really quick. Now we should be able to see the effect happen in real time. So now look at this. It's actually just going and doing the effect that we want it. So now actually let's do this, go to this rendered output properties and change this to like 80 maybe. Ideally for these high particle uh, animations, it's very, very, how I say it, it's strenuous and your computer can take forever to render them. So it just depends on what you're doing. But now you can see that we have it working like this. So once you've confirmed everything is working for the physics aspect, we can go ahead and let's press zero again, get us in camera view zoom out a little bit let's get rid of my man cube right here x delete and now here's the fun part so all we need to do now is just animate the ammo that way when it hits the cube it will do its thing the thing is it's a little different when you have to animate going sideways versus something falling so that's something i want to show you because the cube by just sheer gravity aspect it just falls and breaks it but for the, the ammo how are you going to get it across right so few little thing uh, changes we need to do. So go here to the physics property, click in the ammo. If you don't know how to do it, just double click the arm. And if you still can't get that, go back to the turret controller, like I said here, go over to this one was laser left and just select ammo L. And we have this one by one, by the way. And go here to rigid body, click on this, active. The mass, again, it can vary depending on what you're trying to get to break. But since these are like, 10,000 20,000 kilograms then you could update this according to the the weight that you think and obviously the heavier it will make a different effect and pretty much if we were to go here and I hit space it's gonna fall so first things first always you don't want it to fall go back down to dynamics deactivation start deactivation so now it's not falling so now what we can do we'll go here to one we'll keep it here obviously press I and let's just do Let's do location. And then for 20, let's do G double Z and watch what happens. If I go past the cube, it's just gonna reset. And you're like, what's going on? Simple fix, go over back to the top where it says active settings, mass dynamic and have it animated. So now if I press animate, obviously it allows me to bring it over here. I can press I location. So now if we go here, well, let me hold on, yeah. Ignore that drag, let me just command Z. Go here, boom, look at that. Did you see that? Boom. So now, the thing is with zero, you probably wanna make it a little more. So let's do, go back to 20, G, double Z, and basically bring it outside of the camera view. As long as it's outside the camera view, you should be fine. Go back to I again, location. Resets here, bam. So now it looks a little slower. So if you wanted to make it faster, you can do, uh, G and move it over to 15, boom, bam. But I think for like the tutorial uh, sake, it looks cool like that. 
And all you need to do is the same thing here. Double click to ammo R, select it like this. Rigid body, animated down here, deactivation, select these two, G. We'll actually go back to uh, the one first, I location, so that's it set. And then for uh, 15, G, double Z, and then move it over here. And then press I and location. Now it looks like it's like a little slightly off, but for the most part, let's just watch this. And then boom, we'll see like this. And now, if you were to go play this, just like that. And in camera view, you wouldn't see this like later. So if I zoom in, shift left, play, bam, just like that. And now that's a little animation we have. So if you want to go ahead and view this in cycles, obviously it's look way different. Go here. And now I rented mine in 128, and I also tried to be six in terms of speed wise. So if viewport, let's just do 128 for now. So you can try 128. If you don't like the coloring and stuff, you can do um, 256 too. Or if you have a fast computer, obviously you go higher. But then we shift, left click, press space, boom, just like that. And if you wanna have a cooler effect, you can uh, obviously adjust the speed, what, what it comes out. So like if you have the thing like this, you can see it like that. And you can change the angles, etc. And that's basically how I did that. And also one last thing, if you wanna make it where, for example, let's see, uh, double click into the LF demo and if you want this to be a little slower so let me just select this last 15 right here G move it over to like here now you can see it shoots like this so I think it looks cooler obviously this effect doesn't make too much sense but since it's already breaking it but that's no effect like that and also I forgot to show you the rotation part so technically if you wanted to start this RZ you could have my guy like this first and then he can move around like that, and then he can shoot it. But for that, it's fairly simple to make that. And I also have that in the previous tour, but I'm gonna go Alt, R, Option R to reset that. And let's just play just like that. And then if you want to render this, simply go over here, output tab, select obviously your frame rates. So you can change it to 30 or even 60, depending on your computer and what you're trying to do. But basically go here, type your name in and there's different ways to render, but the easiest is simply just have it as an FFMPG video. Go down here for the encoding container, change it to MP4. And output quality, change it depending on your computer, but pretty much just keep it for now. And then simply go here, render, render animation. And then you are good to go. And also I do have it in cycles. So that is one thing to keep in mind. And if you don't like the lighting, obviously you can add more lights and stuff too. And the last thing I forgot to show you, one last thing that's very important actually, this is very important. So if you're still here, stay tuned because this is big, is the main cube, you'll notice that it has like the little breaks in it. So what you need to do is you need to scale it up a, just a little bit and then you go over to this orange tab and then scroll down to, right here it says uh, visibility. This is very important. So the first render, this is the viewports, but you wanna make sure it's on render. So you do keyframe it here and then the second, the first uh, laser hits, which is like right here. So I'll go like by, by frame eight. I want to hide my cube man. So let me do option H again back. You can just simply uncheck it, that's easier. And then boom, select, select. And then pretty much now, if we go here, now you can see it's there like that. So it disappears. So that way you don't have that ugly, like um, little glitch looking effect. And then technically we go like this. Now again, you can change the timing and stuff, but that's pretty much how we have it created so far. And then simply go now, when we run animation, it shouldn't show the, um, yeah, now it doesn't show like the little cracks because of the uh, the pieces we're breaking through. So that's how we did this. Like and subscribe, comment down below what you think, and I'll see you in the next video.